Fear of injections is one of the main reasons people avoid the dentist. And patients will judge your skills as a dentist by how well you deliver dental anesthesia. Of all the injections, the inferior alveolar nerve block is the most common. It should be very straightforward, but the numbers tell us a different story. This injection has a surprisingly high failure rate up to 25%. That means that in the average dental office, we perform 10 inferior alveolar nerve blocks each day. And on average, for two patients, this injection fails. To make things worse, for many patients, this injection can be uncomfortable or lead to complications. But why is that? Turns out, this nerve block looks easy, but it isn't. Technique is everything, and for good technique, you need to know your anatomy. Hi. On this mandible, you can see the mandibular foramen and the lingula. The lingula is one of our most important landmarks. Here is the inferior alveolar nerve. You need to deposit the local anesthetic here, right before the inferior alveolar nerve enters the mandibular foramen. You don't deposit it there. The teeth will not get frozen. Your patient will not be numb, and you'll have to give another block, and maybe another. It looks easy enough. Now, how do you find this spot on a patient? But where do I go from here? When I look inside the patient's mouth, it's impossible to see what's underneath the mucosa. I'm shooting blind. I'm aiming for the lingula. But where is it? On this prosection, you can see the inferior alveolar nerve, the lingual nerve, the mandibular foramen, and the lingula. With the layers peeled back, you can aim right for the lingula. Now, let's take a look at the actual patient and we'll see how we do the injection. With the tissues back in place, I can use landmarks to overcome my blindness. With my patient fully supine and the mouth wide open, I place my thumb on the coronoid notch and my fingers on the posterior border of the mandible. So what are the intraoral landmarks? Let's identify them. Here's the pterygomandibular raphe. When I pull the buccal mucosa taut, I can identify the pterygomandibular depression. The anterior-posterior insertion point of the needle is located three-quarters of the distance from the coronoid notch to the raphe, within the pterygomandibular depression. I move the syringe towards the insertion point from the contralateral premolars. You should advance along the needle slowly, about two-thirds to three-quarters of its length, until you make contact with bone. Now pull back about one to two millimeters to prevent a painful subperiosteal injection. Don't forget to aspirate to ensure the needle is not in the blood vessel, which runs along the nerve. Once aspiration is negative, and you're certain the needle is in the right spot, slowly deposit 1.5 milliliters of anesthetic around the inferior alveolar nerve. We still need to deal with the lingual nerve. Withdraw the syringe partially until approximately half of it remains within the tissue and aspirate again. If aspiration is negative, deposit the remaining solution. 
You've just been shown how to give this injection correctly. Now, watch some of the errors that can occur. The most common error is injecting too low, below the lingula. To aim for the lingula, the needle will be 6 to 10 millimeters above the occlusal plane. You can also inject the needle too far anteriorly or too far posteriorly. Remember, the needle will penetrate the mucosa two-thirds to three-quarters of the way to contact bone. Any less than that, and you're too far anteriorly. If this happens, don't panic. Leave the needle within the tissue, withdraw slightly, and move the syringe barrel towards the front of the mouth. This will reposition the needle tip towards the lingula. If your needle penetrates too deeply without contacting bone, you're now too far posterior. Your needle may be near some very important anatomical structures you do not want to inject into. The tip of your needle may be within the parotid gland, near the facial nerve. If you inject here, you can cause transient facial paralysis. In this case, withdraw the needle slightly until one quarter of the needle remains in tissue and reposition the needle and the barrel of the syringe towards the back of the mouth over the mandibular molars. Now advance the needle until you contact bone and finish the injection. Withdraw the needle and move on to the next procedure. So remember, anatomy matters. It's not just for school. You'll be using it every day for the rest of your life. Thank you.